Good morning. morning. Welcome to the third Sunday of Easter. You should have a yellow announcement flyer in your bulletin. Um, Please read and inwardly digest all that it contains, not least of which are um, three things that are happening um, today and tomorrow. Today, immediately following the 1030 service is an all-parish meeting to discuss uh, next step options for funding the Strengthening Spirit campaign. All are welcome and encouraged to come to offer some feedback on your opinions and to discuss the various um, options that we have in front of us. Um, We also had a lot of food left over from Bill Gish's funeral yesterday, so we're going to be serving lunch too. So if you're worried about getting lunch somewhere, stay here and eat with us and go to the meeting. This afternoon at 3 o'clock, there is a concert, free concert from Nashville Classical Guitar. They present world-class music right here at St. David's, and we're so incredibly honored and lucky to have them with us. So 3 o'clock this afternoon right here. And then tomorrow, um, we begin the study of Francis Weller's Wild Edge of Sorrow. All are invited. Bring a bag lunch. We'll start at 1215-ish in Sanders Hall. And that's going to be a a group that goes until uh, we finish the book, but probably about eight weeks or so. We'll talk about the organization of that tomorrow. Um, Again, a number of other announcements. There's a Make It Day coming Thursday that all are invited to participate in. And then um, next Sunday, there's a family house meeting for um, families with children and youth in Sanders Hall after the 1030 service. I want to call your attention to an announcement in the front of your bulletin, which you'll see there for about six months. And it's about uh, what came out of the house meeting reports regarding music and liturgy at St. David's. Um, There were a uh, a number of very complimentary comments, as well as a number of comments where people were challenged by aspects of the liturgy. So the the music and liturgy staff got together, discussed them, and talked about ways forward. And one of the ways that they talked about it was to try to get some feedback, specific feedbacks. People, if they, people said, I don't like the hymns, we need to know, like, why? What hymns? What is, what is working and what's not? And so to that end, there are these blue forms, which are in the narthex and in the hallway here, and some envelopes that are suggestion boxes. If you feel so moved over the next six months or so to fill one of these out, if there's a hymn that you particularly loved or a hymn that you particularly disliked, Um, or was it meaningful for you during the service? Please take a second and write it down. There's some other options on here too, um, such as, you know, other suggestions for liturgies and things like that, so that the music staff can, uh, and the liturgy staff can get a greater sense of what is helping us to draw closer to God in this time together and what's not. Um, And another thing that we talked about was introducing some education, some formation opportunity into the liturgy, and today presents us with one of those opportunities. Um, I don't know if you all know this, but we use five different hymnals. The Episcopal Church has five different hymnals, in addition to two supplemental books that offer us choices for service music. And I think a lot of folks don't know that a lot of the hymns that we end up printing in the bulletin actually come from those hymnals because we don't have copies of those in the pews. Um, And uh, in addition, there are tons of other resources out there, and we are incredibly lucky to have Stephanie Budway, who's the liturgy professor at Vanderbilt Divinity School, and she has access to all this stuff and why and has just amazing wisdom when it comes to choosing music that will go with the different scriptures of the day. So um, this hymn, the sequence hymn today, is a particular one of those examples that she's brought to us, and I'm going to let her talk about that. So from here on out, you'll see some music moments, which might be little explanations of why we choose hymns for what day and what readings in the bulletin themselves. But um, we're going to have Stephanie introduce those as they come along. It won't be every Sunday, but as they come along. Steph, thanks. Good morning, everyone, the voice from above. (laughs) Uh, So just a little word on the sequence hymn, uh, which is Daylight Fades. And there's a little blurb in the bulletin that talks about why I've chosen this particular hymn today, um, the relationship with our gospel text. But this particular hymn was written by a dear friend and mentor of mine, Peter Scagnelli. 
And this hymn comes from his 2017 collection, This Day of God. As Reverend Carolyn mentioned, we have our hymnal that's in the Purex. We have other hymnals that I'm going to discuss in the Wild Onion. And we also use hymns that come from beyond our hymnals. There's a great wealth of hymns out there, such as Peter's hymn here. Um, and we're just grateful to be able to print them in the bulletin so you can have a diversity of hymns that speak to our congregational song. So I really invite you to take time with this hymn. Maybe take the bulletin home and read through the text and pray with it. It's an extremely powerful text. I actually posted it on Facebook and everyone was just like, wow, this is an amazing, gorgeous, beautiful hymn. So I invite you to take it home and pray with it and to remember that the texts that we sing are also prayers that we sing and so that you can take those hymns home with you and pray with them throughout the week. So I hope you'll pay special attention when we get to the sequence hymn. It's set to a beautiful, haunting Irish tune. Uh, so I hope that you enjoy singing that today. Thank you.
that Christ is risen. The Lord is risen indeed. Hallelujah. Almighty God, to you all hearts are open, all desires known, and from you no secrets are hid. Cleanse the thoughts of our hearts by the inspiration of your Holy Spirit, that we may perfectly love you and worthily magnify your holy name through Christ our Lord. God, whose blessed Son made himself known to his disciples in the breaking of bread, open the eyes of our faith that we may behold him in all his redeeming work, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Please be seated. from the Acts of the Apostles. Peter addressed the people, You Israelites, why do you wonder at this, or why do you stare at us, as though by your own power or, or piety we have made this man walk, the God of Abraham, the God of Isaac, and the God of Jacob, the God of our ancestors, has glorified his servant Jesus, whom you handed over and rejected in the presence of Pilate, though he had decided to release him. But you rejected the holy and righteous one and asked to have a murderer given to you, and you killed the author of life, whom God has raised from the dead. To this we are witnesses, and by faith in his name, his name itself has made the man strong, whom you see and know. And the faith that is through Jesus has given him the perfect health in the presence of all of you. And now, friends, I know that you acted in ignorance, as did also your rulers. In this way, God fulfilled what he had foretold through the prophets, that this, his Messiah would suffer. Repent, therefore, and return to God, that your sins may be wiped out. The word of the Lord. Thank mm -hmm. you.
first letter of John. See what love the Father has given us, that we should be called children of God, and that is what we are. The reason the world does not know us is that it did not know him. Beloved, we are God's children now. What we will be has not yet been revealed. What we do know is this. When he is revealed, we will be like him, for we will see him as he is. And all who have this hope in him purify themselves just as he is pure. Everyone who commits sin is guilty of lawlessness. Sin is lawlessness. You know that he was revealed to take away sins, and in him there is no sin. No one who abides in him sins. No one who sins has either seen him or known him. Little children, let no one deceive you. Everyone who does what is right is righteous, just as he is righteous. The word of the Lord. Jesus Christ according to Luke. Jesus stood among the disciples and said to them, Peace be with you. They were startled and terrified and thought that they were seeing a ghost. 
he said to them, Why are you frightened, and why do doubts arise in your hearts? Look at my hands and my feet. See that it is I myself. Touch me and see, for a ghost does not have flesh and bone, as you see that I have. And when, they had, when he had said this, he showed them his hands and his feet. While in their joy they were disbelieving and still wondering, he said to them, Have you anything here to eat? They gave him a piece of broiled fish, and he took it and ate it in their presence. Then he said to them, These are my words that I spoke to you while I was still with you, that everything written about me in the law of Moses, the prophets, and the Psalms must be fulfilled. Then he opened their minds to understanding the scripture, and he said to them, Thus it is written, that the Messiah is to suffer and to rise from the dead on the third day, and that repentance and forgiveness of sins is to be proclaimed in his name to all nations, beginning from Jerusalem. You are witnesses of these things. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Christ. Please be seated. I read quite a bit to prepare for today, and most of what I read, I simply could not wrap my mind around. I even got the inside scoop on what's being preached at Springfield First United Methodist Church, and yet again, I could not go there. So if you were hoping to hear a sermon about Jesus asking for something to eat, I hate to tell you that you're going to be disappointed. My mind and my heart and my energy were drawn in a different direction. Today's gospel covers a wide range of emotional responses. In the first two sentences, we go from peace to fear and being startled. Now, perhaps I was drawn to this contrast because of my work in counseling and making a living asking people, so, how do you feel? But, more importantly, my attention was focused on this point of the passage because it is my perception that what most of us want is peace. But it seems that often we live in and operate out of a sense of fear. Before we go any further, I think it is important that we understand a bit more about peace. Peace be with you, Jesus said to his disciples. This is how many of us will address each other when we exchange the peace in a few moments in the middle of our service. But do we really understand peace? Peace is one of those words that seems to have lost some of its meaning through translation. Peace in this sense is far more than the absence of conflict. It's more than the peaceful, easy feeling that the Eagles sang about in 1972. And it's even more than the opposite of war. The Hebrew word shalom has been reduced in a popular usage almost like aloha to a simple greeting and farewell. Peace in today's passage is much more like the peace we read about in John when Jesus promises the Holy Spirit to be with the disciples. There he says, peace I leave with you, my peace I give you. I do not give to you as the world gives. Do not let your hearts be troubled, and do not be afraid. This peace is the feeling that all is well with the world. All is just, all is fair, all is the way God means for it to be. It really is more of a command, if you will, than a feeling or state of being. It is a call 
for each of us to do what we can to make the world look more like God's world. It is a call for us to strive to create the kingdom of God here and now rather than to bow to the societal and political forces. Last week, we read that the disciples were behind locked doors because they feared the Jews. In today's account of Jesus appearing to them after his resurrection, they are described as startled and terrified. Now, Jesus asked them why they responded in such a way, but I get it. I would be startled and terrified too. Imagine how you would feel if you had just buried your friend and a few days later while you and your closest companions were together grieving and trying to support one another and your friend suddenly appeared. Startled and terrified seemed to be spot on. There are two questions that I think arise for us as we consider this passage. The first is, what do we fear? And the second is, why do we fear? Our fears may be personal, getting a dreaded diagnosis, losing our job, or being alone and forgotten. Our fear may be much bigger, like national security, and the threat of something that would disrupt life as we know it and expect it to be. Fear can be paralyzing at times. But remember, in 1933, Franklin Delano Roosevelt stated in his first inaugural address that all we, ha we have nothing to fear but fear itself. This is true in a biblical sense. When we are held captive by our fear, we cannot bear witness to the great joy of Easter. The hymn, He is Risen, was an earworm for me this week as I was writing this, so I want to share the text out of our hymnal here with you now, and our children's choir will sing a version of this a little later. Christ is risen, Christ is risen. Tell it out with a joyful voice. Christ has burst the three days prison. Let the whole wide earth rejoice. Death is conquered, we are free. Christ has won the victory. Come you sad and fearful hearted with glad smile and radiant brow. Death's dark shadows have departed. All our woes are over now. Through the passion that he bore, sin and pain have power no more. Come with high and holy hymning, chant our Lord's triumphant might. Not one gloomy cloud is dimming that bright, glorious morning light, breaking o'er the purple east, symbol of our Easter feast. Christ is risen, Christ is risen, and has opened heaven's gate. We are free from evil's prison, risen to a holier state, and a brighter Easter beam on our longing eyes shall stream. What a glorious picture of peace this hymn presents that we need to tell out with a powerful voice. Jesus was hungry in today's passage, but I propose that his hunger was figurative. He was not hungry for broiled fish. He was hungry for us to step up and do our part. Jesus' hunger is for shalom. Will we work for this peace, or will we cower behind locked doors? My prayer for each of us is that we are hungry too. I hope we are hungry to care for the sick, to feed the hungry, to clothe the naked, and to befriend the lonely. The time is now to bring shalom. As Paul wrote to the Philippians, be anxious for nothing, but in every but by every but in everything by prayer and supplication with thanksgiving, let your requests be made known to God, and the peace of God which surpasses all understanding 
will guard your hearts and minds through Jesus Christ. Shabbat Shalom. Amen. We believe in one God, Father of the Almighty. Prayers of the people. Redeeming God, who saves us through the sacrifice and resurrection of Christ, we ask your help to carry the gospel and to reflect your love to all whom we encounter. Sovereign God, in whose kingdom of love we claim our first citizenship, we lift up all nations of the world. Endow those in authority with wisdom and understanding, that we may all live in peace. Creating God, from whom all life flows, we plead your forgiveness for our failures to nurture this rich earth and for our abuses of it. And we pray for ourselves that we may be better stewards for the welfare of all your creation. Healing God, who restored so many wounded, marginalized, and afflicted persons <coughs> to their communities, help us see the needs of our neighbors and empower us to meet these needs so that all may come to rest in your loving embrace. Risen Savior, God of good news who transformed futures through your healing, for peace in the Middle East and Ukraine, Ron, Bill, Will, Sam, Tim, Jean, John, the Seaver family, Charles. We also pray for all who suffer dis-ease in body, mind, or spirit, for those who grieve and for those whose concerns only you may know. Living God who rose again from the dead and who will raise us to eternal life and all those we love yet see no longer. Almighty God, to whom our needs are known before we ask, help us to ask only what accords with your will and those good things which we dare not or in our blindness cannot ask. 
for the sake of your Son, Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Let us confess our sins against God and our neighbor. Most merciful God, we confess that we have sinned against you and in the Almighty God, have mercy on you, forgive you all your sins through our Lord Jesus Christ, strengthen you in all goodness, and by the power of the Holy Spirit, keep you in eternal life. Amen. The peace of the Lord be always with you. Please be seated for a moment. We have a, a couple of things to say here. We have a, a presentation for some folks in the choir. Laura, do you want to take it away? I'll try. Um, we have had a wonderful year in the children's choir this year, and our two members have been such stalwart participants in all rehearsals and singing duets all year, we had to acknowledge them. And also, we felt that after this year, with the amount of duets they did, that they de deserved special recognition. So we have hymnals for both of them with an inscription that says, in recognition of choir service, this hymnal is presented to Josie or Tom, St. David's Episcopal Church. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you for your service in the choir. Thank you so much for all of your hard work, you two. The other thing we have to do today is that we've had um, Ed Love Lady, who's uh, been sitting here on the front row for the past season, I guess, what, just after Christmas? And through the spring is a resident of Florida and will be returning. He's been up here visiting with his daughter all spring and he's going to go back to his home in Florida. He's a retired priest. Louisiana, sorry. I said it twice. I'm glad. I'm glad. There's a Florida connection though, isn't there? No. Okay. I don't know where I got that. Sorry. Louisiana. Well, he's a retired Episcopal priest who has really enjoyed uh, being among us, and I thought that we could um, say a prayer for him on his, on his last Sunday here as a, as a means of goodbye and a thank you for being with us. It's been a pleasure to have you with us. Well, it's been a pleasure to be with you, and I uh, appreciate the welcome and the inclusion uh, in your church family. You've made me feel like family, so hopefully I will be back to visit you. And his daughter just lives right over on Davidson, so that's why he was here with us. Well, let us pray. God, our Heavenly Father, whose glory fills the whole creation and whose presence we find everywhere we go, preserve those who travel, especially Bill, Ed, help me, Lord. <laughs> Surround him with your loving care, protect him from every danger, and bring him safely to his journey's end. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Amen. Thank you. I don't know where Bill came from. <laughs> Thank right. you. Let us walk in love as Christ loved us and gave himself a perfect offering and sacrifice to God.
The Lord be with you. And also with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is truly right to glorify you, Father, and to give you thanks. For you alone are God, living and true, dwelling in light and accessible from before time and forever. Fountain of life and source of all goodness, you made all things and filled them with your blessing. You created them to rejoice in the splendor of your radiance. Countless throngs of angels stand before you to serve you night and day, and beholding the glory of your presence, they offer you unceasing praise. Joining with them and giving voice to every creature under heaven, we acclaim you and glorify your name as we sing. mighty works reveal your wisdom and love. You formed us in your own image and giving the whole world into our care so that in obedience to you, our creator, we might rule and serve all your creatures. When our disobedience took us far from you, you did not abandon us to power of death. In your mercy, you came to our help so that in seeking you, we might find you. Again and again, you called us into covenant with you and through the prophets, you taught us to hope for salvation. Living God, you love the world so much that in the fullness of time, you sent your only Son to be our Savior. Incarnate by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, he lived as one of us, yet without sin. To the poor, he proclaimed the good news of salvation. To prisoners, freedom. To the sorrowful, joy. To fulfill your purpose, he gave himself up to death, and, rising from the grave, destroyed death, and made the whole creation new and that we might live no longer for ourselves, but for him who died and rose for us. He sent the Holy Spirit, his own first gift for those who believe, to complete his work in the world and to bring to fulfillment the sanctification of all. When the hour had come for him to be glorified by you, his heavenly Father, having loved his own who were in the world, he loved them to the end. At supper with them, he took bread, and when he had given thanks to you, he broke it and gave it to his disciples and said, Take, eat, this is my body which is given for you. Do this for the remembrance of me. After supper, he took the cup of wine. And when he had given thanks, he gave it to them and said, Drink this, all of you. This is my blood of the new covenant, which is shed for you and for all, for the forgiveness of sins. Whenever you drink it, do this for the remembrance of me. Faithful provider, we now celebrate this memorial of our redemption, recalling Christ's death and his descent among the dead, proclaiming his resurrection and ascension to your right hand, awaiting his coming in glory and offering to you from the gifts you have given us, this bread and this cup. We praise you and we bless you. We praise you. Lord, we pray that in your goodness and mercy, your Holy Spirit may descend upon us and upon these gifts, sanctifying them and showing them to be holy gifts for your holy people. The bread of life and the cup of salvation, the body and blood of your Son, Jesus Christ. Grant that all who share this bread and cup may become one body and one spirit, a living sacrifice in Christ to the praise of your name. Remember, Lord, your one holy Catholic and apostolic church, redeemed by the blood of your Christ. Reveal its unity, guard its faith, and preserve it in peace. Remember all your people and those who seek your truth. Remember all who have died in the peace of Christ and those whose faith is known to you alone. 
Bring them into the place of eternal joy and light, and grant that we may find our inheritance with patriarchs and matriarchs, prophets, apostles, and martyrs, with David of Wales, and all the saints who have found favor with you in ages past. We praise you in union with them and give you glory through your Son, Jesus Christ, our Lord. Through Christ and with Christ and in Christ, all honor and glory are yours, Almighty God and Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, forever and ever. Amen. And now, as our Savior Christ has taught us, we are bold to say, Our, our Father, Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Alleluia, Christ our Passover is sacrificed for us. Therefore, let us keep the feast. Alleluia. The gifts of God for the
Let us pray. Almighty and ever-living God, we thank you for feeding us The God of peace, who brought again from the dead our Lord Jesus Christ, make you perfect in every good work to do his will, working in you that which is well-pleasing in God's sight, and the blessing of God Almighty, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit remain to you today and always. to love and serve the Lord. Alleluia, alleluia. Thanks be to God. Alleluia.